Next talk with the wonderfully broken title, I love it, Emoji Domains and How Wonderfully Broken They Are, by a very, very wonderful person, Genoa, um, who is a, a web developer. And you wouldn't believe it, her nick is Unicorn. Here is her unicorn. Uh, hi, Genoa, this is, tell us everything about Emoji Domains and why they are so rotten broken. Your go. Yeah, thank you a lot. Um, exactly. Uh, I'll be speaking a bit uh, about these wonderfully broken things. And um, the talk will be kind of like, um, I start with a bit of an info dump about the history of emoji domains and what they actually are. And then I will um, talk about my personal experience breaking things with them. Um, so yeah, let's start right off with the um, with the history. So DNS was standardized in 1987 uh, with a very limited character set. So um, you can see like uh, only uh, uh, Roman letters uh, and some numbers and like four for um, uh, non-letters. Non uh, so these are definitely not uh, sufficient for many languages and it's a very Eurocentric uh, view or not even just Eurocentric, uh, Eurocentric uh, but it's actually very centered on the English language and it was uh, clear that this wouldn't suffice. So in 19, uh, 1996, um, internationalized domain names were proposed um, which allow encoding characters that are not supported or that are not officially supported um, into this uh, very small character set so that browsers could uh, simply convert them on the fly. Um, this, uh, so sources kind of disagree when this exactly went live or when, when you could start it, uh, when you were able to use it for the first time. Uh, the IDNA 2003 uh, standard allowed the support, but the first emoji domains were actually registered in 2001. Interesting about this is that uh, in 2001, uh, emoji weren't part of Unicode yet. So you can see these are the examples, like the hot springs, um, those do show as emoji, which is because uh, they are both emoji and Unicode pictographs. So not actually emoji domains at the time, but uh, right now uh, they were kind of converted into emojis. Uh, back then they were just pictographs. Um, it's not, I couldn't really find out if those domains actually resolved if you entered the pictographs uh, back then, or if it was just someone who was hoping that they would rise in price uh, once IDNA 2003 or whatever standard would implement it uh, went live. Um, so there was also an IDNA 2003 normalization, but uh, that's not too interesting for us because we just want to look at the emoji side of things. Um, IDNA 2008 actually banned emoji for most uh, major TLDs because of concerns that it would be used for phishing domains that looked very similar to actual uh, other domains. Um, like there are, uh, every character exists as an emoji um, to be able to make, uh, um, country flags, so uh, that could be used for phishing and they decided to ban it for most major TLDs that uh, comply with IDNA 2003. And just um, important to my little story, uh, in 2020, the Emoji 13 standard or, uh, uh, yeah, Emoji 13 added, added a transgender pride flag emoji. Um, you will see why that's important later. So what actually is this puny code encoding? Um, it's a non-human readable representation of Unicode characters. So you can see this symbol here would be translated to xn dash dash c8h, which obviously doesn't make much sense to type in, but your browser will take care of this. So DNS didn't have to be changed. It's only uh, inside your browser that these conversions happen. 
Uh, compatible browsers, uh, depending on which browser you use, will either intransparently or semi-transparently translate. Firefox, for example, uh, as a mitigation to these um, phishing attempts, does uh, allow you to enter emoji or, or other Unicode characters. But as soon as you enter it, will, uh, the URL bar will show this x and dash dash domain. Um, Safari, as far as I know, uh, does not um, do it transparently. So you will not know uh, what exactly the Punicode representation is of what you were just entering. And uh, different uh, TLDs only support a specific subset. As I said, IDNA 2008 actually banned it. Um, oh, fun fact, uh, I forgot on the last slide. IDNA 2008 went live in 2010, which is kind of confusing, uh, but whatever. So uh, yeah, um, different TLDs only support specific char sets. Most don't support emoji, but there are TLDs that have supporting emoji as the main selling point. Um, so. TIDs that most people wouldn't want to uh, use uh, unless they just simply are interested in emoji. Uh, so why did I end up uh, breaking things with it? In uh, early 2011, uh, not 2011, 2021 this year, I was unemployed and looking for interesting ways to build my portfolio. Um, I knew that emoji were somewhat supported, but I didn't know what. Uh, how exactly it worked. I just knew that there were some people that had emoji domains. And uh, I was kind of happy that there was a transgender pride emoji added. So I decided, well, maybe it's a good idea to add some domain that contains this uh, transgender pride emoji um, to also kind of uh, become less interesting uh, for bigoted uh, potential employers. So yeah, let's register a domain with that uh, emoji. Well. That uh, seems to be a bit more difficult because these domains, even though you never really counted them, seem to be sold out. Nothing I, I looked up worked. And actually, the web interface broke a bit, but uh, more to that later. Um, well, none of these domains actually resolve to anything. Uh, .dev does not support emoji at all. And Namecheap uh, doesn't support emoji even with uh, top level domains that do support them. So I had to uh, go to another registrar, um, which is, was a bit annoying because I thought, well, I like having everything in one place, not specifically because I love Namecheap or anything, but whatever. A few minutes later, I now am the proud owner of transgender pride flag uh, purpleheart.ws. At least that's what I think. Um, so. I just set up to uh, build a small demo page for it and deploy it on my server and test it. And wow, my server usually isn't that slow. It timeouts. Well, uh, the route looks OK uh, inside my uh, reverse proxy. Trying again. And um, after a long time, I end up with this wonderful error message. So we're sorry that domain is invalid. So it also doesn't show the transgender uh, pride flag anymore, um, but that could be down to simply their web font not um, supporting it yet because it was just added to Emoji 13. At least that's what I thought at that point. Um, obviously, I was a bit scared because, well, I just spent 10 euros on something and I didn't really know when I would have uh, a stable income again. So I did this to find a new job and German unemployment benefits are really difficult to get. So I was a bit scared. Um, but it, uh, GoDaddy didn't sell me some uh, invalid domain, or uh, they also definitely did not scare me. Um, because if you enter these exact characters that apparently are invalid, it does resolve to my server. So uh, when I looked at the GoDaddy web interface, it also showed these three characters, the purple heart, white flag, and transgender symbol. Um, it's simply not the domain that I had entered into the uh, emoji domain search engine. Um, wasn't just their web font that doesn't support it. And that is caused by the wonderful uh, zero with joiners. Um, to avoid having tons of similar emoji, each with their own code, many emoji are created by combining others. So you have the uh, skin tone modifiers, for example, or the country flags. 
that are a combination of different emoji with a zero with joiner. The transgender pride flag is a combination of a white flag and the transgender symbol with a uh, zero with joiner in between. And the thing is, Punicode does not really support them. So it was simply just dropped during conversion uh, while I uh, bought my domain. Um, but that's not everything. Uh, because uh, I still had this project, I still wanted emoji domains, uh, and I, 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 my interest was peaked. So uh, I kind of wanted to try out what else I could break. Um, to avoid spending even more money on this project, uh, I chose to move to test uh, my testing to subdomains, which was a good idea because I have way more control over subdomains than I have over regular ones. I can register them with any registrar, so I could use just my go-to registrar. Um, I can register whatever strings I want, so even invalid punicode. I can register them until a TLD that does not allow it because it's not a second level uh, domain, uh, but a third level domain. Um, and yeah, let's see what browsers do about that. So I created the subdomain transgender pride flag dot dysphoric dot dev. Firefox converts it to uh, XN, and I'm not gonna say all that. Um, Chromium converts it to a different string, which uh, if you plug any of those uh, into, um, into a converter, they uh, it will tell you that both are invalid Punicode. Um, however, both are understood and routed, so I just simply added an uh, all route, route to my uh, reverse proxy so that both would work. Um, if you use dig, which is a, a command line tool that lets you look up domain records. Um, first of all, it doesn't do the uh, punicode conversion at all. So uh, I had to use one of the strings that uh, one of my browsers uh, gave me. Um, but when I used that string, it also gave me this, uh, it's not a valid IDNA 2008 name, uh, disable validation using these two parameters. Also, it didn't tell me that I needed both. Uh, so I added the first and then, oh, you still need a second. But whatever, it, uh, once both were added, I was able to uh, get correct results and uh, yeah, my site was reachable. Um, the next thing I thought of was, uh, what if I, uh, I move my domain to a non-supported registrar? Because as I just um, talked about, Namecheap does not actually allow emoji domains. Um, and I, I was interested to see how their web interface would handle it. Sadly, it simply did not handle it at all because um, they don't support WS domains. I wasn't really uh, going to contact their support team to try and still get it, uh, get it because this was only a simple thing that they were probably just simply not interested in hosting that domain because it breaks their web interface if you try to. Um, or other things uh, about emoji domains break their web interface. So I don't really see why their support team would actually be on my side here. Um, oops, sorry. So uh, what about email? Because apparently email clients really enjoy breaking um, from my experience at least. Uh, do they break with emoji? Um, when trying to add in emoji domain as a uh, as a sender, uh, my mail server actually broke because validation was run after Punicode to Unicode conversion, which caused an uncaught exception, um, which was surprising. Uh, it's already fixed, but the patch is not released yet, so I couldn't yet test it. Um, but there's still the local part, which I could already control um, as much as I wanted to. And uh, the mixed res uh, it led to mixed results. So Thunderbird simply ignored it and just showed the Punicode. And um, Apple Mail dropped the zero with joiner uh, and also showed deep Unicode under the, uh, the thing where it, uh, where it shows the exact domain. So mixed results, nothing too spectacular, no exceptions or crashing clients or anything interesting like that, sadly. Um, what uh, did I learn during this? Well. Obviously, emoji domains are very buggy. Uh, implementations vary from browser to browser, so you can have the same input string and get different Punicodes out of it. Um, 
So testing in just one browser definitely is not enough. Uh, well, it never is, but here especially it isn't. And you may be able to buy a domain that won't work as you would think, which can cause quite the annoyance. But it's still a lot of fun to mess around with this stuff, uh, just not for productive use. I like to end my talks by telling people to join a labor union. It doesn't have anything to do with this, but uh, that's what I do for some reason. And um, I've got also a blog post about this where I've written it up and I will publish the slides under the wonderful domain uh, poop emoji in the code w, w, uh, dot ws. Um, it's just a link to my regular blog for now. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I think I went a bit fast, but uh, I still thank you for your time and I'm open to questions. I'm online. Um, oops, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. I'm, my machine is slow. I unmuted myself about half a minute ago. Um, thank you for that beautiful talk, uh, Genoa. I had to grin a couple of times because it was great and it made my day. Um, and actually, we have a question. Um, the question is in German. I'll say it in English. Why is DNSSEC so complicated for emoji domains? Well, um, because no one actually, uh, no one actually really likes emoji domains except the people who sell them. At least that was my experience uh, looking up things for that. So. Uh, they are kind of disallowed in the standard, but just uh, some top level domains um, just ignore the standard and uh, still let you register them. And um, it's just something that uh, people who implement things don't want to think about at all. So uh, I haven't actually tried DNSSEC, but uh, it's just something that is easily forgotten because it shouldn't actually exist, which may be a bit harsh, but yeah. Is you remember the ringtone fads when 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 uh, smartphones didn't exist yet? Uh, is this just a fad like this ringtone thing, and it will just disappear within the next couple of years, or do you think emojis are here to stay? Is this serious? I think emojis are here to stay, but not within domains. Or, or like it was possible since two thousand and. One kind of, but at least since uh, 2011, where the first actual emoji domain was uh, registered. Um, but most domains that are like popular examples already don't resolve anymore or are reserved to sites that sell emoji domains. So um, emoji domains definitely um, are, are not, not much more than a fad or a nice, uh, a funny thing to just look at uh, for a bit. Uh, However, emojis uh, as a whole are such a large part of our culture, I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon because it's been more than 10 years uh, and uh, the downloadable annoying ringtones were, uh, were popular for a bit less time, I think. This is a question that I actually wanted to ask myself as well. Uh, because I run my own email server as well. And um, which email server software do you talk about? Do you, uh, do you know about supporting others? What do you um, use as a software on your email server? Uh, my email server is uh, running on MailU, which is uh, a set of Docker con uh, containers that are especially made to work together um, to make setting up an email server as painless as possible uh, for free. Um, so I haven't actually tested any other servers, however, in theory, they shouldn't actually um, have any issues. So the part of MailU that failed wasn't actually the mail server part. It was simply a, a parser. Um, 
So in theory, with another mail server, uh, it should work if they didn't also um, mess up parsing at some point. Somebody asked here, is there a list of top level domains that support emojis? And somebody posted an answer in Wikipedia. Is that correct? Wikipedia has such a list? Um, it has, but it isn't actually correct, the list that it has, at least the English Wikipedia. It lists at least one domain that no longer supports emojis, um, which is actually some kind of big political thing uh, where they removed support. So um, the Wikipedia list is not, uh, not complete or it contains too much. Um, there are, however, registrars that will um, that are specialized in emoji domains and those will have uh, current lists. So uh, I had uh, WS is uh, one of them. Um, it's not the wet heart emoji though, because that is invalid puny code. And so I don't really know what to enter in my URL bar to get to them other than searching it on Google. So. <laughs> um, next question, is there a difference between a single puny code and multiple emojis chained together as a second or third level domain? Um, so it's just different, uh, it's just different puny code um, depending on how many emoji you have, but uh, theoretically the uh, implementation for this, uh, which is, uh, I think the um, technical term was uh, ASCII to Unicode or something, uh, which is like an algorithm to convert it, uh, does handle multiple uh, emoji uh, similarly to, or it, it should work without any issues uh, if one of the two works. Are there any emoji first level domains? No, there are not. Um, there are Punicode first level domains because there are languages that, um, that simply do not use uh, the same letters as English does. So, Punicode first level domains are uh, existent, but no emoji first level domains at this point. Maybe there will be, a, uh, but I kind of doubt it because the people uh, in charge of this emoji domains are kind of an eyesore to them uh, from what I could read. So, Talking about eyesores, I always have the impression that at least to the old coders, uh, diacritical signs in themselves were considered an eyesore, you know, the little funny little dots those German speaking people have on there. <laughs> Don't talk about the Czech and the Poles. Um, now my name contains such a diacritical sign. My first name is Andre and I've been fighting with all kinds of inputs that say seven bit ASCII and nothing else here. Um, uh, do uh, diacritical signs still break um, uh, domains? Um, they should not because uh, they are actually the reason why uh, IDNs exist. So uh, it was actually proposed by someone who has one of those signs in his name and probably just wanted the domain with his name. Uh, so um, this was the, the actual reason why uh, we have Punicode in the first place and supporting emoji was kind of an unwanted side effect. So in theory, it should work without issues, but uh, Still, many people uh, don't think about it enough when implementing their own um, things. So you can never be too certain that it will. But it should. Yeah. Somebody posted here that somebody obviously runs on Windows and says in Windows 10, the emoji menu comes with the combination of the Windows and the full stop. Um, is that common already or is that new? I think it's common by now. Uh, it's an implemented, and ever since that, everybody's been using emojis. Um, and the, there's also a remark here that says MS Outlook adds that actually a pretty good, a pretty good Unicode Punicode support, but uh, still don't try emojis. Um, um, yeah, I remember there's the story about. Uh, when the when the Bosnian wars broke, when the Yugoslav war, especially the one in Bosnia, broke out, 
there were about 100,000 Bosnians that fled to Switzerland, and about 50,000 of them were granted citizenship, but they couldn't be registered in the citizenship register because that only supported 7-bit or 8-bit ASCII, but no diacritical sign of Gavril Cevic. And I think they fixed it by now, but that was quite a thing some, some years back. Um, yeah, I see no further questions. Oh, yeah, there's one. <coughs> one <coughs> excuse me, that came in right now. <coughs> Is there a uniform way to generate puny code over multiple platforms? Mobiles do not work well with entering Unicode numbers, as we all know. Um, I'm not sure I, um, I understood this correctly, but uh, the easiest way to, uh, that, that I used during my testing was uh, simple uh, online converters that would work on every uh, page. And actually, my... Uh, my system doesn't have a shortcut for emoji, so I would always copy and paste the emoji from Emojipedia into an uh, uh, online Punicode converter and just use use it from there. Because I don't actually use emoji that much. Okay. Um, we have come to the end of our time. We still we'd have another minute or two, but we have no more questions. And thank you in the meantime for coming and holding this talk. You'll have another talk, I think it's tomorrow. Mm -hmm.